All right, so after Lizzie Dynan's uh, bike seemed to go pretty well with you lot, I've decided to make another video about Sonny Cobrelli's bike. Uh, this, I think, will be the last day of no camera as my face is being very healing well. I actually look acceptable again. So anyway, first of all, straight off the bat, it's a Merida Reacto top of the range frame set. Um, it's got disc brakes, surprise, surprise. I don't think anyone ran rim brakes in the men. Some women's team did run rim brakes. Um, which is obviously probably not great for a race that was basically a mud race, a cyclocross race, more or less. Um, so obviously, Jura Race Di2 is the one Ford boy. Um, he's got Vision, just standard Vision Metron, like 50 mil wheels, 32 millimeter cycle, well, 32 millimeter GP5000 S1s, which got released today. Um, they're supposed to be faster, supposed to be lighter, and supposed to be. Well, they're in tan walls as well. I can't remember. There was something else they were supposed to be as well. Um, maybe more punch proof. But anyway, they look... I mean, the tubeless ones are already really quick. So this boy on tubeless will be also... Um, you know, the rolling resistance is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Potentially close to quarter speeds despite having um, the ability to use them in actual races. While if you're on courses, you'd be on like course controls, which are just rubbish tyres really. Courses are only good in quarter speeds in my opinion. Because otherwise they puncture a lot and aren't that quick. Um... We're going to scroll down a bit more. Um, we can see his chain ring looks pretty big. I reckon it's like a 54. Um, and then on the inner ring, he's probably got a 42 or something. Um, yeah, not one by. That's just because Shimano really don't like you going one by. Um, but I was looking at the women's bikes. Not actually all of the SRAM teams were one by. It was only some. And I even saw some of them wearing, uh, using time pedals, which is rogue. We actually look at Sonny Cobrelli himself. He's wearing overshoes, like aero overshoes, which I think is probably a really clever thing because... Number one, they're more aero than aero socks or just cotton socks. And number two, probably going to keep your feet dry. So win for Sully Cobrelli there. Um, obviously wearing a skin suit. Everyone wears a skin suit, even in a muddy race like um, Roubaix. Aero helmet as well. Still got his little sunglasses on, which I think is funny. Um, anything else to mention is just his handlebars as well. Um, they're actually round and not super idle. Not many people ran aero handlebars, to be fair. I think it's just because... Number one, air handlebars, good chance they might break. Um, number two, just not as comfortable. And number three, when you're actually riding on the hoods, like the thing is most races, you never ride on the hoods. Maybe you do on the climbs, but basically you never ride on the hoods. So it doesn't actually matter how comfortable they are. But on Paris Bay, obviously that is the complete opposite because on a lot of the sectors, it's more comfortable. And a lot of people do, Cobrelli especially, he was riding a lot on the tops. So it's actually quite good if you, if you um, have round tops, Diagon also had round tops. And then, you know, sometimes they get the climbing shifter on there as well. I didn't see that on Cobrelli's bike. Um, we'll have to go and, and zoom in. It was very hard to find pictures of his bike, to be honest, like actual pictures of his bike, not just like we haven't really seen any close ups, which is a shame. Um, standard bottle cages as well, really like nothing metal, which is odd. So the, the article, the title of this article, if you didn't see, it was like saying he had a normal bike. And I think it's true. Like, really, this is what like the average human, like if you had a million pounds, um, okay, save disc brakes for most people, but um, this is like an optimal bike, you know, it's got wide tires, so it's actually comfortable, it's tubeless, so you know, if you get a flat, it's not the end of the world, I mean, I'm not a massive tubeless fan, just because it's a bit too much fat, unless you've got TTs where every what matters, and then, you know, normal handlebars, so you've got more adjustment, says the man who has integrated a bar and stem, and then, you know, disc brakes is, you know, personal preference for me, I'm not a huge fan of them, because uh, they weigh a lot, and then the saddle, obviously, is normal as well, it's just, it is a pretty normal bike, and I think it goes to show that, like, back in the day with tubulars, they had to make some compromises going with FMB tubulars. I can't imagine they're very quick. Um, while now they don't have to make any compromises, they can run the fastest tyre in a wide width at low pressure. Um, he had no punctures. Obviously, Ineos did have a lot of punctures, so maybe they got their tyre pressures wrong, because obviously, you know, it's not just the tyres itself, it's also the pressures. Because uh, Quickstep also got a lot of punctures. That could be a tyre issue, because not many other people run specialised tyres. Uh, apart from Bora Hansgrove, they didn't really have any. I don't think they got punctures. So again, maybe it was just tyre pressure. But Sonny Cobrelli got it right. He got, you know, fast tyres, fast wheels, fast bike. No messing around with these, you know, dodgy suspension style bikes that Diagon had. Which is not to knock it. It's just, you know, whatever equipment you have is the fastest. But Mar like, obviously, you know, it's going to be the case that an aero bike is the quickest on a pan flat course. And then, you know, probably could have gone deeper wheels, maybe if you really wanted to. Um, again, one by is probably the only other option to get rid of the single ring does uh, reduce drag a little bit. But apart from that, it's a pretty optimized bike. 
Um, interesting to see again that he's got this interesting stem, which is a vision stem, I believe, that allows uh, you to hide the cables, which is obviously, again, an aerodynamic gain. Um, so, yeah, there we go. I hope you did enjoy this video. Should have some more out this week, uh, just about general racing and the build up to Lombardia and the end of season classics, which is always an exciting time uh, to see, you know, where everyone's form is and all the rest of it. So, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe as always. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.